And welcome back to the U.S. Space and Rocket Center here in Huntsville, Alabama. I'm Kyle Hill, and if you're just joining us, this is the third video in our three-part series that we are calling Jedi. <coughs> I'm so sorry. Jedi versus Sith. Now, if you are just joining us at our little academy, we are taking two Star Wars cosplayers at the top of their game and pitting them against each other in a true Star Wars meets NASA competition to earn ultimate bragging rights and to see if they can earn the robes and the armor that they wear so proudly. Now, in the last episode, my Lynn had a clean sweep. She won the bonus round. She created the best ablative shield for her little egg trooper to survive and she answered the most questions correctly in the multi-axis trainer here at Space Camp. It's now all tied up, but we saved the biggest and best challenge for last. We're getting our feet wet while simulating microgravity. But first, another Star Wars Battlefront 2 trivia round underneath the largest rocket to ever fly. Let's go. If you've been watching, you know the drill by now. This is our timed lightsaber round, where our contestants will attempt to answer as many questions as they can correctly within the time limit. The contestant that answers the most questions correctly will get our bonus going into the final big challenge. Are you ready? Yes. yes. First question. When playing as Han Solo, players will be able to quickly mow down enemies with which blaster? The DL-44 Heavy Blaster. That's correct. Ray uses what move in order to highlight her nearby enemies? Insight. I guess you saw that question coming. There are four tiers of star cards in Star Wars Battlefront 2. Common, uncommon, rare, and what? Attack. That is true. Epically answered. <laughs> Who is the Admiral in the Inferno Squad? Garrick Versio. That is correct. Excluding droids and commanding officers, how many members are in the Inferno Squad at the start of the Star Wars Battlefront 2 campaign? Three. That is correct. Next question, who portrays Gideon Hask? Uh, uh something Blackthorn. Ah, uh, I can't remember his first name. I'm sorry, it is Paul Blackthorn. Uh. How many vehicles are in Battlefront 2? Two. two. Come on. No, there are 39. Sorry, that's time. So, my Lynn, you answered three questions correctly, which means you get our bonus going into the big challenge, which means you get to remove two decoys going into the microgravity simulator. Are you guys ready to take a swim astronaut style? Yes. Let's go. And this is it, your final challenge of this series, the microgravity and neutral buoyancy simulator. Your task is in full scuba gear to go down 24 feet to the bottom of this gigantic pool and assemble a TIE fighter out of 30 pieces, all while underwater. Whoever can do that the fastest and return it to me will be our winner. But I should warn you, there are decoy Star Wars vehicles down there that are bound to make you waste time. And if you return the wrong vehicle to me, you will be disqualified. Now, my Lynn, you did win our bonus Star Wars Battlefront 2 trivia challenge. So you will get to remove two decoys from yourself. How does that feel? It feels great, but I am going to waive my bonus because I don't think I need it. Ooh, that was both good and kind of a diss. <laughs> I love it. Okay, it looks like the playing field is now perfectly level. So why don't you both get your wetsuits on? Mylin, are you ready? Yes. All right, your time starts now. Slowly making your way down. Just to get all the way down, 24 feet down to this 
neutral buoyancy simulator, find the correct bag, and then start building the vehicle out of 30 pieces. And she doesn't know how to put it together beforehand, so it may take a bit. I thought going into this, there would be like more of a swimming aspect, but the way that you're weighted, so I guess more like if you were in space, like on the moon, you still have some weight to you and you push off the things. So I get down there and I see a bag and it's just all gray. And I realize it's definitely a decoy. So I start searching for another bag and the next one I find also definitely a decoy right away but I can't find another bag. So it took me a moment, I'm searching, I'm searching, looking up, looking down, and I finally see what looks like a TIE Fighter wing. And I immediately swim up to that bag and grab it knowing that's the one. Of course, all of this begs the question, why does NASA have a facility like this? Well, unless you are on a body of a planet that has less gravity, the only way to make yourself weigh less is to use buoyancy and the buoyant force is just equal to how much weight of water your body is pushing out of the way so when you go down in the water the water pushes back on you with the volume of your body weight times the density of the water but what's important is that if you balance out that buoyant force with dive weights then you can stay level wherever you are as if you are weightless so this is a way to train as if you were in space to make those delicate movements and feel how your body would respond to them that's why you need a giant pool like this so i thought i would actually be in the water just like floating putting this together and it made it easier for me to hold on to the pieces and keep them in one place because i was weighted to just get everything, hold my bag at the bottom, and pull a piece out one at a time as I was trying to build it. This kind of thing isn't just a space camp activity either. Astronauts do this to train for space, except they're usually wearing full pressurized space suits, but they do go into gigantic pools, even with full mock-ups of the International Space Station to practice what it would feel like and feel like to work in weightlessness or microgravity. There was definitely a moment of panic when I was putting the main parts the, of the body of the TIE Fighter together. I was trying to get, like they had these little like pinpoints that you've got to snap into each other and they weren't quite lining up. And at one point, the window of the cockpit popped out and I thought it was about to float away. And so I was like, oh no, now I've got to like get this other piece back in there. So I'm trying to like jam it and get it to all fit together. Mylin is now well on her way to building what I hope is a TIE Fighter. It's kind of hard to see from here. I had no sense of how long I was down there. It could have been one minute, it could have been 20 minutes. I have no idea. Looks like My Lin has both wings on her TIE Fighter, which means she's almost done, and all she has to do after that is bring it back up to me. So you're not disqualified, which is good. <laughs> and it is all put together properly, not falling apart. Great work, good time. I had no idea what this challenge was gonna be, walking up and seeing this giant pool. And then he tells us we have to find models and build them underwater. Oh, and there's decoys. Oh, and there's a million pieces. Your times. Jesse, looks like you're all suited up. Are you ready? All right, your time starts now. As I'm going down the ladder, I'm just it's so long. It's so much longer than I expected. I reached a certain point and I thought I was at the bottom and I was only halfway. So looking down, it's actually way deeper than it looks from the surface. I just keep moving and moving and then my feet hit the ground and then I just go. I just go for it and I just start looking in bags. So you see this bag hanging from one of these cylinders, and I'm like, don't tell me it's this bag. 
and I look at it and it's mesh and I can kind of see through it and I can see the outline of the TIE fighter wings and I knew that that's the bag. It's really hard to just free swim in uh, scuba gear. So I had to just kind of like jump up and untangle the bag and then I sprawl it all out and immediately start building. What this is simulating under simulated microgravity is having to do an EVA outside of a spacecraft or extravehicular activity when astronauts actually have to leave the safety of a pressurized craft and go outside of it to work on something, whether it be the craft itself or something they needed to service like the Hubble telescope. So this is supposed to make you feel like you're in no gravity. And I, I mean, I have nothing to compare it to but it definitely, I felt weightless and it was really, you know, the pieces started getting away from me at one point and I kind of just like very slowly move and try to get the pieces back into place. I felt like a space sloth, maybe, just kind of. Once the, the cockpit, the window fit in, like the putting the wings on was a breeze and then I just water ran. You can't really run in water, but I ran to the ladder and then went up as fast as I could. I see bubbles near the ladder. Looks like Jessie may be on her way up right now. And time. That is certainly a TIE fighter. I'll put together again a bit waterlogged, but nothing's falling apart. This was another good job and another good time, but before I tell you both what your times are, so we can declare a winner of this series, I think we need to go someplace a little bit more suited to the vibe we got going on. Up until this point, everything has been tied. Now we are ready to announce the winner because we have the results from the microgravity and neutral buoyancy challenge. Bring in the 501st Legion. That's better. The winner of Jedi versus Sith is my Lynn. <laughs> thank you so much for watching Nerdist Jedi vs. Sith, and thank you to Electronic Arts. You can pick up Star Wars Battlefront 2 right now on all major platforms. May the Force be with you, always.